Welcome to my presentation about the multi-hypothesis guidance with an interacting multiple model filter. I would like to start with the current state-of-the-art approach for a ground-based aerial defense system. First, the interceptor is launched and then turns towards the target, where the mid-course guidance then takes over, which brings the interceptor on an energy-optimal trajectory close to the PIP, the predicted intercept point. Before reaching that specific point, the interceptor is able to detect the target, in this case an aircraft, with its own onboard sensors like a radar or an infrared sensor. In the end, in the so-called endgame, the proportional navigation takes over and guides the interceptor into the target. During this whole process, but especially during the mid-course guidance, there are uncertainties about the target, for example, the type of target and the maneuvers that it's currently flying and the maneuvers that it will be able to fly in the future. These uncertainties cause the predicted intercept point to move or even jump around. But how should one react to a changing predicted intercept point? Here, the approach for a single hypothesis guidance is shown. It assumes that the target is going to follow one hypothesis forever, in this case that it's flying in a straight line. If it turns out at some later point in time that the target is actually following another maneuver, in this case maneuver 2, the interceptor has to correct its course due to the changing predicted intercept point. In this case it has to pull upwards. Let's assume that by pulling upwards, the interceptor loses too much kinetic energy and thus it's not able to hit the target anymore. In contrast, the multi-hypothesis guidance, as shown in red, chooses a much steeper trajectory because it considers both maneuvers 1 and 2 of the target. By choosing the steeper tra trajectory, the interceptor can pull down if it turns out that the target is actually following maneuver 1. If it turns out that the target is following maneuver 2, the interceptor can continue on its almost ballistic trajectory and thus it's still able to hit the target. The illustration on the bottom shows the approach for a multi-hypothesis guidance. First, the target is detected by a fire control radar on the ground. Its measurements are then used by an interacting multiple model filter to estimate the position and velocity of the target, but also estimate the parameters describing its trajectory, like for example the ballistic coefficient. The IMM filter also estimates the probabilities of the target following one of the specific hypotheses. This information is then used by the multiple parallel guidance laws, which consider their own hypotheses. They produce multiple acceleration commands, which are then in the last step fused together to create a single acceleration command that can then be executed by the interceptor. Now let's take a look at the interacting multimodal filter. It consists of multiple extended Kalman filters that are run in parallel. Each extended Kalman filter represents its respective hypothesis for the target behavior. Starting with the last estimate for the state x hat, the covariance matrix p, and the mode probability vector mu, the mixing probabilities are calculated and then with its help the new predictions for the state x bar and the covariance matrix p bar can be calculated. These are then updated in the correction step with the help of the measurement c from the fire control radar. The correction step not only returns a new estimate for the state x hat and the covariance matrix p, it also returns a likelihood lambda, which denotes how likely it is that the target is currently following its respective maneuver. In the fourth step, the mode probability update is executed, which means that these likelihoods lambda are transformed to form a new mode probability vector mu. In the last step, the estimate for the state x hat and the covariance matrix p are weighted by the respective entries of the mode probability vector mu to form a new estimate for the state x hat and the mode probability vector mu, which are then used in the multiple parallel guidance laws. This information by the interacting multiple model filter is then used by the multiple parallel guidance laws. There is one guidance law for each hypothesis for the target behavior. In this case, there are five guidance laws, as you can see. These guidance laws are 
just normal zero effort misguidance laws assuming the denoted hypothesis for the target behavior. Now let's take a look at the different acceleration commands computed by these different Gaines laws. You can see the accelerations in the body fixed YZ plane as calculated by the different Gaines laws. I proposed three different approaches to fuse these different acceleration commands together. The first one chooses um, the weighted average of the accelerations. So the acceleration is multiplied or weighted by its probability as estimated by the interacting multiple model filter, resulting in the blue X on the right side. The second approach aims to keep all of the um, targets under the possible hypotheses reachable. In this case, that means that the smallest enclosing circle is chosen. Its center is used as a commanded acceleration as shown on the right. And the last approach tries to mitigate the worst case, and in this case, mitigate and the worst case means choosing the the acceleration with the largest magnitude. In this case, it's A2 denoted by the green X. The three approaches were then tested in simulation with two criteria. Number one, a minimum distance, everything less than two meters was considered a hit. Everything more than two meters is considered a miss. As a second criterion, the dynamic pressure was taken into account to evaluate the energy efficiency of the Gaines law and also a higher dynamic pressure stands for a higher maneuvering capability of the interceptor at the point at time of the impact. In total 64 different target trajectories were simulated. The targets included aircraft, ballistic missile, helicopters, cruise missiles and so on. As a benchmark a single hypothesis Gaines law which assumes that the target is going to fly in a straight line was chosen. Here you can see the results of the simulation. The four different colors denote the four different Gaines laws. The darkest shade of blue is the benchmark, the single hypothesis Gaines law. The other three blue shades denote the different proposed approaches for a multi-hypothesis Gaines. The targets were split into different classes of targets, and as you can see, the multi-hypothesis guidance with a weighted average, so the second one from the left, is either equal to the benchmark, the single hypothesis guidance, or achieves a higher percentage of hits. The other two approaches perform either equal to the benchmark, but sometimes worse and sometimes better. Looking at the dynamic pressure at the time of the impact, we can see that the multi-hypothesis guidance with the weighted average always achieves a higher dynamic pressure compared to the single hypothesis guidance. And the other two approaches sometimes achieve higher, sometimes lower dynamic pressure. It stands out that the multi-hypothesis guidance with the maximum acceleration always achieves a lower dynamic pressure, which results from the high accelerations, which cause high induced drag, which slow down the vehicle. In conclusion, one can say that the multi-hypothesis guidance with a weighted average scored much better than the benchmark. Not only did it score more hits for every category of target, it also did so with a higher dynamic pressure. The other two versions of the multi-hypothesis guidance were usually just too inefficient to hit the target. And one could see that the multi-hypothesis guidance is especially beneficial for diverse targets. So if you know that the target is a ballistic missile, then you, there's no need to um, consider multiple hypotheses. But in general, there are multiple kinds of targets which can execute multiple, um, ex uh, multiple maneuvers. So in these cases, it makes sense to consider all these hypotheses to increase increase the chance of a hit. That's it from my side. Thank you for your attention.